Well, for a couple of alternative perspectives on the Fraser of Allender report, I'm joined by two MSPs from Edinburgh, Dean Lockhart of the Scottish Conservatives, and with me here in Glasgow, Scottish Labour's Jackie Bailey. Uh, well, D Dean Lockhart, d do you accept this explanation that there's really nothing to explain? No, not at all. I think the, this is a real indictment. The Fraser of Allender report, a leading uh, institution in Scotland, has said that we've had a lost decade under the SNP, and that's absolutely right. We're, Scotland's economy is underperforming. We are on the brink of recession. And um, while the UK, the rest of the UK economy, is one of the fastest growing economies in Europe, we find ourselves in but Scotland. What, what is your explanation then of why? I mean, the Fraser of Allender says it's not just oil and gas, there's something else mm. going on. What, what is your explanation of what that something else is? Well, Gordon, can I, can I just say a couple of things? To grow the economy, if you look at successful economies worldwide, Singapore, Germany, Switzerland, it takes a whole of government approach. What you really need to do is every, every department of the economy, education, enterprise, economy, needs to be aligned to grow the economy. We have here in Scotland a Scottish government that has its priorities elsewhere. The First Minister, Nicola Sturgeon, has said independence transcends the case for the economy for, for, well, okay, for national they, wealth. They, so, they, so they have, as Jamie Hepburn has just been listing, a whole series of initiatives. The problem seems to be that they, partly that they're not addressing whatever that specific problem in Scotland is, and it's still unclear. Um, I admit economists are unclear about it, but, it but, but certainly politicians seem unclear about it. Well, the Fraser of Allender is very clear when they say that what we need is real policy. It's not headline policies. The Scottish government's approach of having the four-eye um, economic it, strategy yes, is less, very high it's level. It's less clear what those policies should be. It's about implementation, Gordon. It's about successful implementation. It's about having a focus on what actually works in the economy. And this government, after 10 years, it's very clear they don't understand but, but, the economy. Well, give me one big idea of yours, then. Well, other, we, other, we, other, we, other. Have, we have published uh, on a UK-wide level a 140-page industrial strategy that incorporates a sector approach to the economy that is basically so is supported by the Royal Society uh, of Edinburgh, uh, the Scottish Whisky Association, who have asked the Scottish Government to support the UK-wide industrial uh, strategy. And that's what we're saying. We want a new approach to the economy, and that is about harnessing our strengths in different sectors. Food and drink is a success. FinTech is a okay, potential right. in the Scottish society. So that's what we should be doing. We should be focusing right. on a UK-wide level. Not, I'm still not clear what that means in specific terms. Do, 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 Jackie Bailey, what's your explanation for this? Well, I think if you look at the Scottish economy, over the past 10 years, it's grown by 1.2%. That's a really small figure when you compare it to the preceding seven years where it grew by 17%. Now, the thing that has been common in the last 10 years is a constant obsession with independence. And I have to say, when you talk to businesses, businesses hate uncertainty. They didn't like Brexit because of the uncertainty. They don't like the constant threat of an independence referendum because of the uncertainty yeah, Although there's very little hard evidence to back that up. Well, I mean, there, there themselves. have been good figures, for example, for foreign direct investment in Scotland. So well, it's you, difficult to argue the point you're making. If you look at foreign direct investment in 2014, it actually dropped off. If you looked at foreign direct investment in the property market in Scotland, it dropped off substantially. Hey, I, I, now, I, I'm, it, I'm sorry, it's businesses I, I, again, themselves saying this to us. It's not us saying it. it. It's businesses it's bit, as, it's as late like, as It's a bit like Jamie Hepburn with oil and gas. Even if we concede the point that sure. threat of independence referendum might have something to do with it, it doesn't explain, really, what you've just said, that, that, that over the last decade, one2 percent growth. I, I'm not quite sure what the equivalent figure is for the UK, but it's 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 very it's much much higher than that. Yeah, the UK um, grew at a higher rate, and that that's the thing. The Scottish economy. I, you can't explain all of that by the threat years. of an independence referendum. No, no, it's a combination or indeed of different by action factors. of governments either. It's a combination of different factors. In the last two years, for example, the difference between the Scottish economy and the UK economy has grown more stark, and that principally is about oil and gas. But actually, we need to get beyond just saying, well, it's that sector or that sector. It's about understanding the Scottish economy as a whole and actually bringing into place the actions required to make a difference. Now, we have an economic strategy. Well, give me one action. Okay. Here's one. 
Currently, with exports, about 60, no, 100 companies um, are responsible for 60% of our exports. They tend not to be SMEs, which is the backbone of the Scottish it's economy. Small and medium so, enterprises. Yeah, so actually, if you invest in small to medium enterprises to ensure that they're taking on board export opportunities, that's one mechanism for growing the economy. Here's another, investing in skills. Companies tell us all the time that there's a skills gap in Scotland. You know, a number of skills, construction, engineering, and others required to boost the Scottish economy. Yet at the same time, the, there is a reduction in the number of students at colleges, the very place they learn okay. these skills. Well, Dean Lockhart, the, the skills point, the, the chap in the film was making that point as well. He said that, that, that people coming out of universities are not really equipped for with the, the skills that, that they need. Uh, I mean, again, why is that a problem, given that education has been such a priority over the past, well, not just in the period of the SNP, I mean, before that? It, it, it is, Gordon, it's a, it, it is a problem. Uh, Nicola Sturgeon said that education would be her top priority, uh, but we've seen uh, under the SNP over the last uh, decade numeracy and literacy level, levels falling. We've had a... Uh, yes, but uh, is, is the problem the, the one that Jackie Daly, Bailey identifies, which is the, number, the cut in the number of college places, or is it something about this? are people taking the wrong... The, the, not the wrong degrees, because people should be entitled to take liberal arts degrees if they want, <laughs> but are not enough people doing the kind of degrees that, uh, that would be useful uh, to the company we saw in the film there? Well, again, I think uh, in order to address this issue, this issue and other issues, we, we need a whole of government approach, which is eff effectively to prioritise the economy. And I think going going to education is about college places that are essential. It's, it's all very well, you know, having great universities. And Scotland has world class potential. We've got great universities, great cities, okay. and a great workforce. But let me ask you, but 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 college places are essential because you, you, they, you, they they provide vocational okay. uh, training. Right. For people who uh, can fill that, that skills point. gap. Okay, look, we're going to have to leave it there. Dean Lockhart, Jackie Bailey, thank you both very much indeed. Now, maybe in a couple of years' time, Joe Swinson.